Every year, we make a video of the Nobel Prize in chemistry on the day that it is announced. Months in advance, I tell Brady not only the day, but even the time, so he should put it in his diary. And this year, he suddenly announced, sorry, I've got to be in America on that day. And I was really cross. There I was, sitting in front of the computer, seeing who was going to win, not a sign of Brady or the camera. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Anyway, rather later than usual, we're making a video about this year's Nobel Prize. And we've got to make the video. We want to have a complete set so that you know what all the prizes are about. So this prize was given to three so-called theoretical chemists or computational chemists who don't do experiments but do calculations on computers to help understanding of chemistry for the development of multi-scale models for complex chemical systems. That probably doesn't mean very much to you, but first I tell you their names. There are three chemists all working in the United States, Martin Karplus, Michael Levitt, and Aria Warshall. Now, let me explain what they did, or at least give you a flavor. I'm not a computational chemist. I've never done any computational chemistry. So this is a personal and enormously simplified view. When people first started doing calculations about molecules, they imagined the molecules as um, heavy atoms joined together literally by springs. And you just calculate, for example, how these vibrate just in the same way as you do the calculation for this model. Now, the problem with this is that the really interesting things about molecules is how they react. And the reactions of molecules are not totally, but largely determined by how the electrons move around along the bonds inside the molecule, or even move from one molecule to another. And if you do calculations about electrons, you can't treat them just like balls and springs, but you have to use so-called quantum mechanics, which treats the electrons as waves. You might ask, well, what's the problem? And the problem is that quantum mechanical calculations require a large amount of computing time, and the more atoms you have, the more computing time. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The difficulty is, that especially at the time when these chemists started working together, or at least in the same field, was that people were really interested about large biological molecules, which might have 10,000 atoms in it. The idea of doing the calculation on a molecule that size was far beyond what computers can even do today, let alone 40 years ago. So their real innovation was to realize that the chemistry in these large molecules often takes place in quite a small volume of the big molecule. You can see this in our video about hemoglobin, for example, where all the action takes place around the iron atoms in hemoglobin, and the rest of the protein is just there to keep the various iron parts in the right places. The idea that they hit on was that you could use quantum mechanics for the really important bits, and you could use the classical mechanics, that is, balls and springs idea, for the parts of the molecule that are a long way away and where the electrons' behavior is not important. And this suddenly opened up huge understanding of the behavior of large molecules and has been very important in explaining to people how these large biological molecules occur. And if you like, bringing us much closer to understanding what is the chemical basis of life. I think that this is a very nice Nobel Prize in the sense that it's a huge intellectual achievement and it applies to a vast range of different sorts of compounds. Just after the prize was announced, a friend of mine sent me an article written by Michael Levitt, one of the three Nobel Prize winners, about how 
Michael Levitt, at the age of 19, applied to be a PhD student, a postgraduate student, at the very famous Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge. And what is really interesting in this story is that the young Michael Levitt was in fact told that he was too young and he should go away for a year and work in Israel. And he really didn't want to, but he was finally persuaded. And he went to work in the lab or into the department of Ariel Warsaw, the person that he has now shared the Nobel Prize with. And what they think of the Nobel Prize. And I should show you the other side as well. It's rather nice. And um, it has a very nice red leather case, but I haven't brought that because it doesn't fit in my pocket.